What is going on YouTubes? It's been a year since Aether SX2 was removed from the Play Store and I wanted to make a recent guide on setting up an Aether SX2 for your Android device to play PS2 games. This guide should work for any recent Android device such as your mobile or handheld gaming console like a Retroid Pocket or an Ambonic device running Android. I'll be using a Windows PC to set this up for my Android tablet, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the download. If we search for Neath SX2 in Google, what we want is the GitHub page, this one at the top. Okay, so on this page, you wanna go over to the right hand side and find releases. If you scroll down, what we want is the Neath SX2 builder. Uh, the link at the top, just click on that and download. Uh, once you've downloaded the zip folder, we just want to extract. So right click and extract all, or if you've got something like 7-zip, just do 7-zip, extract here. If you go into the folder, what we want is the build neath SX2 command program. We double click that. Once you've run the program, you should have two different folders, the original APK and the patched APK. The folder that we want is the patched APK. I'd recommend to name this Neath SX2, just so it doesn't get lost. What I'd recommend is to put a copy of the PS2 BIOS in here as well. So what we're gonna do next is connect our device. So I've just connected to my device and I've already set up a PS2 folder in there. If we copy the BIOS files and the Neath SX2 APK into the PS2 folder we've just created. And that's all we need to do on the PC for now. Okay, so over on the tablet, if we go to the PS2 folder, we just need to locate the Neath SX2 APK that should be in the folder we've created. It should have a red cube symbol if you're unsure and as long as you're happy just click on this and press install and then if we open the app up it will greet you with just a quick setup you'll have a quick FAQ page if you want to read through that and then it will just go into some basic settings so the first option is the optimal safe defaults if you're using quite a modern device I would just leave it on optimal or safe but if you're using an older Android device it might be worth selecting fast or unsafe defaults. The next quick setting as well is the emulation screen orientation. So I would just leave this as use device settings. Uh, aspect ratio is entirely up to you, but widescreen for me, 16 by nine. Next one is theme. I always just have this as dark, which is what my system theme is, but you can obviously change this manually. The next one is the GPU renderer. You can select OpenGL or Vulkan. Vulkan is normally better in most situations, but you can you can try both of them out. And then the last option is the upscale multiplier. Obviously, the higher this is, the more performance it requires from your device. So I'm just going to stick with times two. Next is the BIOS. Hopefully you've copied that in when we move the APK onto the device. If not, you're on your own to find this BIOS, unfortunately, as they are copyrighted files. You can add multiple BIOSes, but I'm just going to stick with the USA one. It will also ask for the location of your games. You could have a separate folder, but I've just kept everything for this example in the PS2 folder. If you select use this folder, it will automatically map the games that you've got in there. So you should see your games pop up if you added any in there. You can change the view so you can have them tiled or you can have them as a list. So there's just a few more settings we want to look at. Most important to look at is the controls. If you go into controller settings and I'm using a 8-bit dough controller for this, just a Bluetooth one with a 3D printed grip. So in this case, I don't want to use the touchscreen. I, I don't know how you would use the touchscreen on a PS2 game, but I'm sure there's someone out there. So the first option is to turn off the touchscreen when a controller is detected. Hide with external controller. When an external controller is detected, it will automatically turn off the touch controls. And then next is to set up the Bluetooth controller itself. Uh, make sure it's a DualShock 2. For some reason, my 8-bit dough is shown as a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, but that's fine. 
So I've just done the quick automatic mapping. Something to look out for though is the shoulder buttons for some reason don't automatically map properly. So I'll just go through those quickly. If you run into issues with your controller, you can always map each key to make sure it's all correct. Once that's done, another quick thing you can do, just to make it look a lot nicer, is you can actually add cover images per game. So you don't just have a big list of purple squares. You can add artwork per game, which is really good. So if you've only got a couple of games, that's fine. But if you've got hundreds of games, then it just makes it much easier to see. And then you can view them tiled or as a list. So now if we just test a game. Yep, that's all working. The only issue we've got now is the memory card because it's currently using a blank memory card. So if you check the timestamp, I'll have a very specific memory card section to transfer. Another quick setting I almost forgot is retro achievements. With this version of Neither SX2, you can earn hardcore achievements, which is really good because retro achievements needs a very specific emulator versions now. But if you want to just use save states, then just turn hardcore off. Okay, this section is for those very few people a year on that still have Aether SX2 installed. Maybe you never got around to it or you didn't even realize it was still being updated. Let's go over the quick steps and what issues you might face. The first thing we want to do is we want to export a copy of the BIOS and memory cards if you need them. You can do this by going into app settings and then transfer data. It will give you an option of BIOS and memory cards, which are the most important. It will also ask if you want to export the cover images that you have currently. If you only have a few games or you've never really set these up, then don't worry about it. But if you do have a large library and a large amount of images to go with each game, then you may want to back these up. For me, I'm just going to back up everything. Once you have the data backed up, we need to uninstall Aether SX2, as you can't have Neither SX2 and Aether SX2 installed at the same time. So the best way to do this is just keep hold of Aether SX2 and press uninstall. Make sure that you don't keep the app data. I'll show you what to do if you do by accident select this, but you don't want to keep any of the app data. Otherwise your device still thinks you will have Aether SX2 installed when you try and install Neither SX2. Okay, so let's say you did tick the box and you kept the data and you keep trying to install Neither SX2 and you keep getting the following error. What you have to do, I had a look in app settings and because we uninstalled Aether SX2, it doesn't even appear as an option to remove the data. I also tried deleting the files manually under the Aether SX2 folder in the internal storage but that still didn't work. So what I found out is you actually have to install Aether SX2 again. I managed to find the APK online. I'm not gonna to link to this because I'm not even sure if this was the right link, but I did go to a trusted download page. So I reinstalled Aether SX2 and then I did the same process again. I kept hold of it, I pressed uninstall and I made sure not to tick keep data. Reinstalling Aether SX2 and then uninstalling it and making sure it didn't keep any of the local data was what fixed it for me. I did try restarting the device several times, but it still thought that the app was still installed. So this was the only way I actually managed to fix this. Once that's done, you should be able to run the Neither SX2 APK. And if you go through the instructions we've already been through, everything should be the exact same. The only difference is you've probably got the BIOS exported, which you would just import as you're setting it up. I'm gonna have a separate section for the memory cards because for some reason Android and the app settings, it just doesn't seem to like importing the memory cards. I tried to do this with the import tool within Neither SX2, but it just kept coming up with this error. So what I found is you actually have to manually transfer this in yourself. It's very simple, you just need to know where the memory cards are saved. If you follow the location on screen, you should get to a folder underneath the SX2 called memcards. 
In here you should have memory card one and memory card two. If you exported memory card one and two, you will just delete these files in here. These are just blank memory cards that are set up when Neither SX2 is installed. So just delete these and copy in your backed up memory cards. For me, it didn't show that it was updated straight away. So I, I disconnected the device and just double checked. For some reason it wasn't showing up in Windows, but it did actually update on the device. After the second time I connected, I could see that the memory card was the correct version. Now if we go back into Neither SX2, after we've manually moved the memory card file into the hidden folder on the device, just opening up um, time splitters. As soon as the game loads up now, I can straight away see my profile, which I'd expect after transferring my memory card. I'm not sure why it's this difficult and such a manual process, but it's something to do with the app settings that's going on with Android. It could be because it's a Samsung tablet, because I've got the same thing on my phone, which is also Samsung where they're trying to lock down things so you can't mess with them as much. So after all that setup, you should now be able to play PS2 games on your Android device, whether you're mobile, a tablet, or a new fancy device like the Retroid Pocket 5. So tell me, what PS2 games are you playing lately? The two I've been playing recently has to be Time Splitters Future Perfect and Burnout 3 Takedown. Great classics we used to play with a bunch of friends. If this video has been useful, give it a like. I hope this video helped and you take it easy.